Hey everyone, Happy New Year. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about a very cool box I've been using. It's called the HP T730. The T730 is a thin client technically, but it's really not that thin. Um, so here it is, and <laughs> as you can kind of already tell, it's a little sizable. This design might look familiar to some of you. You say, oh, I've got a T620 or a 620 plus. And it's very similar to those. It's about the same size as the 620 plus, but the hardware inside is much better. Uh, the 620 is much smaller, but it has about the same hardware as the 620 plus, if I remember correctly offhand. 620 plus adds a PCI Express slot and a couple of other things. Um, this has all the same features with better hardware. I like using these things for things like PFSense or unpacking NZBs. You could use it for a torrent seed box, throw a hard drive in it or something like that. Um, I wouldn't use it for like a primary Plex server or even a Minecraft server. It kind of struggled a little bit unless we were using um, some of the optimized versions and then it was fine. But um, a vanilla Minecraft install or even a modded one would probably not be the best use for this thing. All of those things considered, I mean, it's it's pretty cheap, so uh, I don't really mind that the use case is limited. So this particular one has 16 gig of RAM, dual uh, 8 gig DDR3 SODIMS, and it also has a 64 gig M.2 SATA SSD. I've upgraded the thermal paste with GLID GC Extreme as I do on everything, and um, that's about it. Going over the external features, on the front it has the HP logo, and then we've got power button, dual USB 2.0, dual USB 3.0, and dual headphone jacks. The top of the top one has a uh, microphone combo jack, so it's TRRS uh, compatible. The bottom one is just a regular headphone jack. And then on the back, um, we have a couple COM ports, parallel ports, four display port, 1.4 outputs. So 4K at, I believe, 30 FPS, four USB, uh, I believe those are all 2.0, Ethernet, um, headphone, and line in, and then uh, right here, down here is the power adapter and PS2, of course, on this side. So it's a pretty plain looking unit, but I think the form factor makes it very convenient. I like the power supply, it's external, and it's only a, let's look at the power supply here. So this is the official HP one. It is a 65 watt. You can see it up in the top corner here, HP 65 watt. It uses a barrel type connector. Um, so basically your standard laptop style power supply. Internally, we've talked about the specs a little bit. Um, this one has the AMD RX 527 with four cores, uh, no hyper threading, no uh, whatever the AMD equivalent is, I always forget. It's not super powerful. It's got about 4,500 pass mark. Um, it's good enough for a couple virtual machines, a couple dockers, but really where it excels again is low power usage, uh, compact form factor, and having sort of everything you need in one package. Externally, besides uh, the other features, there's just gigantic vents throughout the entire exterior of this, especially this side. Then we have a vent out the top. This is the main exhaust, and I'll show you that when I, when I open it up. Um, really nothing on the bottom, same thing. These normally have a stand that they go on, and unfortunately I don't have a stand for these, but I've been running them without the stand, no issues, um, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. And you can stack them sort of horizontally like this if you want. And last thing about the exterior, behind this HP logo, if you pull this out, there's your service tag and uh, Windows information and all that. So that's kind of neat. I'm not really sure why they did it that way, but uh, it is what it is. Oh, before I forget, you can vase mount these where the service tag thing is. I suppose that's why they did it, 
Uh, so you can you can still get this with it vase mounted. There's four screws here for a vase mounting bracket. To open up this uh, little HP, we have to take off the back panel and there's a little tab here. Be very careful, this tab can break pretty easily. So just gently uh, sort of pull on this tab and then you'll see it start to separate and you can just kind of follow it all the way back. That's it there. So you've got a naked back panel. And what you want to do is find this green slider and slide it this way. This is your side panel release. And then the side panel with the HP logo can just slide off, revealing the inside. So inside, there's not a whole lot going on. We've got our main fan here. Uh, you'll notice that the CPU is still on the other side, so there's no um, contact here. You'd have to take the entire board out in order to replace the thermal paste or something like that. It's not that hard to do. Although it looks like the panel on this side would come off as well, that's actually integral to the chassis structure here. Um, it's not easily removable, so really at this point you're just going to take out the board and access everything through that way instead of taking the rest of the case apart. Under here is where the RAM is. They have it in this metal cage. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but there's two sticks of DDR3 underneath there. Here's our M.2 SATA SSD right there. I believe there's a Wi-Fi card slot down here. I don't know if you can use that for anything else other than Wi-Fi. I'm sure you could. Maybe a tiny little 2230 SSD or something like that. And the party trick for this PC and why people like it so much is that it has a full X16 PCI Express riser down here. Unfortunately, there's no power connector, so adding a GPU, you'd have to just use the bus power, which is up to 75 watts. Um, the riser is a full 16x, but if you can see in there, the onboard slot is only a 8x. And to install a card in there, what you have to do is push on this tab here and swing it out of the way. You can pull the bracket out. And then you can install your PCI Express card. There's not a whole lot to say about this little system. I really like the HP T730. I think they, they can be incredibly useful and sometimes you can find them for a really good deal on eBay. Um, I think you can pick them up generally for under $200 each with different storage configurations, different RAM configs. Um, a lot of them you'll see are 32 gig of onboard storage with eight gig of RAM. This one happens to be again, 64 gig onboard storage, 16 gig of RAM. Um, some are 16 gig storage, no RAM or four gig of RAM. It just kind of depends. Um, make sure you read the listings when you're looking for these because that does matter and it does affect the cost quite a bit. I wouldn't personally pay more than 200 for one regardless of the config. A lot of people like to use these for day trading and stuff because of those four display ports. It does have uh, some sort of Radeon Vega graphics on board and it's not super powerful. It can play some basic games and do some emulation and stuff like that but um, I've seen people use it as a like a small day trading machine where you can hook up four monitors and you know especially 1080p monitors you just have four 1080p monitors or if you need 4k it can do four 4k monitors at 30 fps um, where you're not doing things that are very um, motion sensitive so I think it's cool in that regard, and it's probably going to be the cheapest way to hook up multiple monitors in that fashion. As a desktop, it's not really the most useful client, although it could be a nice upgrade for an old PC. It's very power efficient. Idle, it's probably around 25 watts, and I mean, you're not going to max out the power adapter at 65 watts. I think you'll probably get to maybe 50 watts under full load. Overall, I think these are pretty great. My recommendation would be to either put in a NVMe SSD via a adapter like this, and obviously with the low profile bracket that these come with, uh, 
put one of those in there, use it for an unpack drive, or you can actually fit a two and a half inch USB hard drive in here, believe it or not. There's an internal USB 3.0 port, which you might have seen earlier. I'll see if I can get a good uh, capture of it. It's right here where my finger is. If you <laughs> orient it correctly, you can put like one of those WD portables in there, plug it into that port, and then just kind of have it float in here and close the case up. So it's not uh, it's not the most elegant design and um, wouldn't be the most elegant use of the case, but it does work and I have done it before just because I wanted to try it. Um, the other thing I would recommend is PFSense and um, PFSense works great on these little guys. They do have uh, AES-NI or at least whatever is equivalent to AES-NI for AMD. Um, so you do get the hardware encryption support and you can add a NIC like this Intel quad port. Um, I don't have the bracket on it right now, but you can just get a low profile bracket. They often come with both. Um, this will fit in perfectly and then you'll have a quad port PFSense box. So I like them in that regard because they're basically fat little USGs, uh, you know, like the ubiquity USG, um, gigantic versions of that. Uh, but it, I think they look cool and they look right at home in a lab setup. Check them out. Um, I will link the HP, uh, 730 on eBay. I will also link, um, the HP T620 plus. I think the HP T620 is fairly useless, so I probably won't link that. Uh, this is also the same hardware that the DFI AMD box has. If you remember me mildly freaking out and causing a small internet panic over that, um, the AMD box, the DFI AMD box actually has the same processor, same quad display port, PCI express X16, just like this has a more industrial design, uh, less consumer friendly while those aren't really available anymore. And you might see them uh, on the market, you know, secondhand market, like on uh, on the serverbuilds.net forums, you might see some for sale. Um, you're not going to really find them on eBay. So if you were interested in that, you could actually take a look for these T730s and uh, they would be a pretty good replacement for that. So if you have any questions about this guy, um, please leave them in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. I will also create a forum thread for these and uh, maybe we can have some discussion about it there. I will be doing a few more small system reviews uh, here shortly so keep your eye out for those. If this didn't quite tickle your fancy maybe the, one of those will. So thanks for checking out this video and I'll talk to you guys next time.